You're such an asshole. Hey everybody, the old captain here. <clears throat> oh, I should probably close the door. Let's close the door. Uh, we don't want to interrupt people. Never pay for your own house. All right. <clears throat> Where are we going? Brian writes, What's up, Aaron? I have heard you talk pre in previous videos about why someone should become a minimalist. My question is, what are some tips on how to live as a minimalist? Where does a minimalist usually sleep? Do they find cheap housing or sleep in a tent? What kind of foods would a minimalist eat? Obviously, a minimalist would drive a cheap car and or walk. I'm just looking for some tips on how to live as a minimalist. Your thoughts. All right. So, there are two very general ways you go about becoming and living a life as a minimalist. One, it's forced on you because you're pissed poor and you ain't got a choice. Two, you may have the resources and money that would allow you not to live as a minimalist. You, you aren't poor, but you come to the philosophical and important, uh, important observation that things don't matter in life. Everything is most important is human, so how do I functionally do it? So, <clears throat> depending on where, what angle you're coming at it from, you're going to either learn, learn one way or the other. So let's do the top-down, meaning it's forced upon you. You are poor. You just don't have the money. All right? Now, if you're a typical American, you spend more than you make, you accrue debt, you accrue credit cards, and you file for bankruptcy. All right? You never grow or evolve as a person, and you frankly are a parasite. If you have some honor, some morality, and you don't want to be a parasite, you, it's, it, minimalism is just a default state of your budget. You don't have to do anything to just like, I got this much money and I got to make it less. So you're, you'll naturally find the cheapest place to live. You'll naturally find the cheapest housing. As you're younger, you'll make errors and mistakes. Like for example, uh, <clears throat> oh, I'm trying to think. like. Commuting, that's a huge thing. Like I always thought, I'm going to find the cheapest place to live. Then I got a job way the hell out in Northfield, Minnesota. <clears throat> and whatever money I might have saved living very cheaply uh, was spent on gas. So there, there's different, you'll, you'll fine tune it. But essentially, if you're poor and you're not a parasite, you've got some pride still left in you, you are not going to collect a government check. You're not going to stiff people. You're not going to stiff your creditors. You're not going to not pay back your student loans. Essentially, you're not a millennial. Um, you will learn what minimalism is. Now, if you're coming in from a bottom up, <clears throat> where it's like, okay, I don't have to be a minimalist, but I would like to be one. It's more of a bottom up, and instead of having the harsh realities of life force these lessons on you, you've got to figure out from the bottom up. So here I find that the best way is you follow some general rules and principles. Um, you follow these policies, you don't break them. And they're nothing that you really couldn't figure out on your own, but I just jotted down a couple here. These are a little bit more philosophical because it's like, don't buy a BMW. Well, we can do a billion of those. So these are a little bit more in general. <coughs> Rules that if you follow them, <coughs> you will effectively have a minimalist life. Now, there's only one that matters. This is the cardinal one. It's the only one that matters. Don't spend more than you make. That's it. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a minimalist because you've made 250000 and you spend 249000 Well, you're not really a minimalist, but that's basically the number one thing. Don't spend more than you make. And maybe you don't reach the Zen Buddhist level like I was sitting in my basement chilling my ass off in a Minnesota winter, but hey, I was going to rental income from the extra unit. Uh, but you, you'll be further ahead than 95% of Americans because they're just dumber than fuck and they piss away their money. I mean, the, the simple fucking rule, don't spend more than you make. It's, it's that simple. It's just that simple. Um, <clears throat> I even have a video, the best financial advice or something like that. And I just said, spend less than you make. And that was it. Bachelor pad there. That was all it was. And it's, it's poignant because it's true. If, if you just don't spend more than you make, you'll be fine. Oh, but we don't want that. We want to hear my... Dude, bro, I need my car. And girls need an inconceivably large preponderance of shit. That I, I just can't believe it. Just can't believe it. So that's, that's the one. So you follow that, you're 90% there. All right. Another question. Do I need this? Everything you buy, do I need this? If you don't need it, then, then don't get it. Now, let's just... Well, minimalists go too far. 
and they deprive themselves of things. And they need it and want there's some gray area, like do I need this car? Well, I don't really need it. I can, I can bike 50 miles a day to work. Uh, yeah, you could, but that's gonna wear out your knees real quick. You, get, you have the risk of being hit by another car. <clears throat> so, uh, but ask yourself before every purchase, purchase do I need this? You know, find out that 10 times you don't. So that's another general rule you can do before every purchase. Will this save me money? Oftentimes, you know, there are expenses, rent you don't get back, clothing you don't get back, but there are things like, will this save me money? For example, uh, LED lights, you know, I'm not a big environmentalist, but they do save you money, you know. So you want to also look at, not like, okay, I'm, I, yeah, you might be spending money now, but it's going to save you time in the future. Um, for example, when I buy my South Dakota place and whenever I get there, I'm thinking about putting in uh, a Tesla wall battery, solar panels, and with it's because I want to go off grid. <clears throat> but will it save me money? And you start looking at the technology today, no, it won't. But you're looking at like, all right, maybe there's an expenditure now that it might save me money down the road. Another thing, car maintenance. Um, how many of you have your little, how many of you don't even give a shit now that your engine light is on because everybody's engine, the, every car's engine light goes on, you know, like, what, oh, it's an O2 sensor. Like, fuck, you know, I thought the engine was, because in the 80s, when a car engine light went on, that meant you were about to blow up at any moment. That you had to pull over and get it fixed immediately. Now it's O2 sensor, O2 sensor. It's, it's the boy that cried wolf. And the reason they forced that on auto manufacturers, because we want to be fuel efficient. Now what do people do? They, they ignore it. <laughs> they just ignore it. Don't ignore that. Not because it could be something serious, which is another reason for you to do it, and, and a $300 repair will save you a $2,000 repair now, but those fuel sensors, annoying as it is, uh, if you spend, the, it depends on the car, but a buddy of mine explained it to me. He's like, yeah, for you, it's going to be about 800 bucks. I'm like, 800 bucks, that's a lot. Of, and then I did the math. I'm like, you know what? I will get three times my money back spending that 800 bucks over the life of that car. So stuff like that where it's like, I don't really need this expense. Okay, that's fine. You don't need it. But will this expense save you more money down the road? Because you're not going in the past. You're going in the future. And if you can save money going in the future, that will add up. <clears throat> so that's another thing where <clears throat> you say, ah, damn it, it's another expense. Is it really an expense? Or over the life of that repair or purchase or whatever, will it save you twice, thrice, three times the amount of money uh, than what you would if you didn't spend it? Is there a simpler, cheaper fix than the apparent one I'm looking at? Um, you will have something break down. And oh my God, I've got to replace it. Do you really need to have to replace this? I had no ideas that came up to me at this point in time, but I was. There's just been many instances in my life where you are conditioned to fix it or replace it. One, do I need it? And if not, get rid of it. But then, am I missing something here? Am I missing something? For example, okay, one did come to me. Um, <coughs> oh, my cell phone's there. Uh, when I first taught dance classes, this was before the iPod and iPhones and MP3 players. And so I'd carry my big ass stereo around, and because that's what you need, I had CDs. Uh, also, my stereo broke. I'm like, dang it, I gotta get another. Do I have to get another stereo? Did I? No, I had an MP3 player on my phone. And you, you immediately, oh, because you're used to teaching with a boom box and all that. No, I'm gonna get some Bose speakers, I'm gonna hook them up to my phone, and I'm just gonna play the music that way. And it's much easier, much so. Stop and really think it through. Is there a easier way to replace this? Do I have something in my inventory right now that will always take? And what you'll find out is you really streamline it. It's like taking something as complicated as a tiger tank and then streamlining it into a P51. You're like, oh wait, well this will serve that function and that function and that function. And I got rid of three things I don't need and I replace it all with this one thing that works actually pretty smoothly. So. I can't exactly say what it will be, but there will be instances in your life where something will fail or break, or it just needs to be, and you're like, wait a minute, is there a way to fix this with what I currently got? And you'll find out, oh wow, it's like really efficient this way now. So that's another way <clears throat> to be a minimalist. Along the same lines, repair, rarely replace. Can I fix it? If you're a minimalist, hopefully you got a fair amount of time on your hands, you go on the YouTubes, and you look up how to repair my, my motorcycle, how to repair my car, how to repair my computer. Um, that is just a give, like try to repair it. Uh, my buddy uh, DT at blackbrigade.org, 
he had a chainsaw that wasn't working. He's like, do I buy it? It's really easy to go to Home Depot and buy it. Or you go get the O-ring that was clogging up the works. You disassemble it, you clean it out, you put it back together. And all right, fine, that took you two hours. But you saved yourself $250 uh, getting a new chainsaw. And now you know how to repair that chainsaw. So down the road, it's like, oh yeah, it's only going to take you an hour or maybe 30 minutes the next time. So that's a, another standard one, repair, rarely replace. <clears throat> all right, this is another nice good one. Fit all your worldly possessions. Really? Not even a call. Hang on. <laughs> I bet you it isn't even somebody important. No, nope, some unrecognized number. Yeah, here we go. Oh? Oh, my stupid fucking phones. Uh, okay. Um, here's one that's very important. Put all your worldly possessions into a backpack. I've been doing this for the past month. Uh, when I went to Europe, I fit everything I needed into a backpack. And you know what? I have lived just fine out of a backpack. I can fit my laptop in there. I can fit my phone, my little underwears and socks, all my toiletries. See if you can live in a backpack. Now, if you're a suit, if you're a corporate muckety muck, you can't do that. You need to wear your suits. You need to have your clothes, right? But as uh, self-employment, online employment, digital nomads, that kind of thing becomes more and more prevalent, uh, you really don't need that much stuff. You really don't. And what this bag will allow you to do is, is basically two things. One, it eliminates the single largest expense and that is lodging. If you look at your house or your apartment, you're going to realize that you only take up yay much space on your bed and the rest of your apartment and square footage that you're paying for, be it renting or paying for a mortgage, is to store shit. All right, this is for you girls out there. <clears throat> so if you get rid of all your shit and you can just fit all your stuff, here we go, look at this, I'll show you. This is what I've been living out of in the past month. If you can fit it all into this, this is all you need. This room is even a little bit big for me for all the stuff I have. <clears throat> and I remember I had lived in a room, I paid 175 bucks a month, admittedly it was in the 90s, so there's been some inflation. But man, did that help my finances, paying $175 a month for just a room. So if you can live in a room on a cot, um, you could use a tent. I know you mentioned squatting or, oh, what do I camp? Okay, then there's some problems with that, like bears in winter. Uh, but if you can minimize the material stuff you have, now let's say you got some keepsakes and things you'd like, you throw it with your folks. Your folks got a big ass house that they're not using no more. Just leave it with the folks. Oh, you know, I'm dropping off these keepsakes, my oh, you know. <laughs> but if you can live out of a backpack, boy, that is going to really drastically cut your single largest expense, lodging. And here's the other thing. It's going to force minimalism on you because it's got to fit in that backpack. I mean, hell, you can even live in your van or a car. I mean, that's, a, that's another option. I, I prefer a vehicle because it's warm, it's insulated. Vehicles actually are pretty sturdy structures. I know more than one person that just throw a van life. Look up van life. They throw a mattress in the back of the van and then they just go drive around. Um, so I, I know a couple of people who just drive around. But then also think about that. You can live very close to work. Your commute time is nothing. If you work at an office and they're okay with you living on a backpack. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so that's something like you have this backpack it's going to afford, like, it ha all your worldly possessions have to fit in that backpack. And that really tells you what, and, and I'll tell you, the number one thing is underwears and socks. You need your underwears. You need your underwears and some toiletries and toothpaste and toothbrush. So that's uh, another thing that you can do right there. Uh, cars, transportation, um, if you, it depends on where you live. It, you can get away without a vehicle, like if you're in New York or Chicago, or you just happen to, not like, you know, the great one himself. Uh, cynical libertarian society. He doesn't have a car. He's got a bike. <clears throat> you can certainly do that if you if you work near where you live. You can walk there. If you live in a town where everything's within walking distance, I'm not against necessarily the urban design of let's have everything within walking distance. Not terribly against that. If you could just get rid of all the fucking hipsters and leftists and communists and feminists and pussy males out of the urban city, and just have some normal guy like yeah. They had that. It was called the American town back in the day. But now, uh, yeah. fuck Ward Cleaver. Fuck John Wayne. Yeah, an urban center. Uh, but a car, it depends, all right? This is where a lot of people, I think, they, they trip over dollars to pick up dimes. 
If you're in a cold environment, you need a car. If you're in the, uh, a normal American city, you need a car. Uh, and also, what would probably surprise a lot of people is I would say you need two cars. What? Let me explain why. You don't want to get a new car. Never get a new car. I, I'm, I'm appalled. I am frankly appalled at the number of clients I get. Yeah, I got a car loan. What the fuck is wrong with you? You get two used cars. Cheap, cheap shitty ass. Shitty. Horrible. Just crap cars. Get two shitty cars. And the reason why is one's going to break down. Then you got a backup. And what's great about two cars, well, isn't the insurance going up? Nope. The insurance does not double. Because the insurance company knows you can only drive one car at a time. So I have always had two shitty cars at my disposal so that when one inevitably breaks, I had a backup. And now I even got a third or tertiary backup with my motorcycle. Although that doesn't work in winter. So the larger point is two shitty cars. I had a $500 Chevy Caprice Classic. I had a $1,200 85 Gutless Cutlass Supreme. It was great. Got a, and yeah, they had to be repaired. But one would go down. I'd use the other one, get to work and do whatever, get groceries, and then I'd work on my free time on getting the other one working up and ready. And so that, that actually saved a fair amount of time and provided a lot of convenience. Um, also then I would learn to repair your vehicles. Another perfect example of, do I need this would be tools. I would say emphatically, yes, you do need tools because it allows you to fix things. So that $300 investment on a nice set of, a complete set of tools would go a long way. Uh, now, will that fit in a backpack? No. This assumes you have a car, so you put it, you know, cars make great storage. You put it in the trunk. That's where I put my tools. <clears throat> um, and so, it, it, you know, it, it kind of depends, like, okay, will it, will it, I mean, your car ends up becoming a larger storage facility than your apartment. Um, but that's another example where buying that set of tools will save you multiple times the amount you invested in those tools down the road. And so becoming a good mechanic, becoming a good computer repairman, although computers are getting so cheap now, you might as well just buy a used one. Um, <clears throat> that's, that's what I would do. Uh, clothing, I have not spent any money on clothing. I, I really don't. I just go to the Goodwill. I get hand-me-down still. Like, hey, you gonna get rid of that shirt? I'll take it. Um, as you can see with my fine dressing. But even then, clothing is so cheap. Now you can go to Walmart. Walmart in some instances, Walmart is cheaper than Goodwill. Uh, so I'm, people are like, oh, I go to Goodwill. Well, yeah, but it's sometimes cheaper over at Walmart. So I would go to Walmart, you know, you gotta get your standard black hoodie, uh, one pair of jeans, hiking boots, running shoes, and then I got some like dress shoes in case me and the GF wanna go out and do something fancy. But um, you don't spend any, I think men kinda got this. Girls are a little different. I'm gonna grant women a, a reprieve from this. Uh, Cause like, well, we gotta look sexy. Yeah, you do, you do. So women have a little bit of a, it, Women do not have to be as minimalist as men because men value their beauty. And if girls are going to wear nice clothes and makeup and hair and shoes, I will actually grant them that. It's like, yeah, you know what? You can, you can have clothes. I understand that. Not three closets worth, but I do grant women. They, they, I don't know if a, a woman could live out of a backpack, but I don't know how attractive she's going to be to your average rank and file guy out there with no makeup and her hair. Except she would be attractive to um, men who are smart. We're like, hey, check it. She's living out of a backpack. Fuck yeah. Hey, how you doing? Let's go explore and fuck. That's my line. Let's go explore and fuck. In that order, because I like adventuring more. Um, so you got the clothes there. Uh, work from your laptop. Live as close to work as possible. Uh, commutes are, commutes are, are cancer. Commutes are just cancer. They waste your life. This doesn't really necessarily address budget. It does address the budget because you got to pay for busing and, and gas. So there is that. Uh, but if you can live nearby where you work or just work from your laptop, not only makes your life easier and mentally more uh, enjoyable and, and calm and serene, but it will save you a fair amount of money. And then finally, live at home and save as much money as you possibly can. Uh, there is an element of shame that comes with living at home. But if you're going to college and you can stay at home and graduate pretty much debt-free, or an increasing number of uh, men I know are doing this, some women too, because they're staying at home, not paying rent, and just saving up money to buy a house for cash, as long as you're saving up your money and not going out and partying and do growing it. And tit up, party go, woo! If you're not doing that, that's fine. But uh, that's another thing that will really help a minimalist, is if you can save up enough money to, to pay for a house, 
preferably one that you could rent out a room or maybe even a duplex or something like that, but we'd have a buddy who would pay rent, which would pay for your, even though you pay cash for it, you still have to pay property taxes as insurance and repairs. That right there, saving up and amassing that amount of money so that by the time you're 26, 27, and it's the, yeah, now you should get the fuck out of the house. Now you got a quarter million dollars or $200,000 and you can buy yourself lodging and you never have to pay interest. You never have to pay rent again. And that, again, the money you spend now will save you multifolds down the road. Um, so that is, uh, those are kind of the rules, the bottom up rules. And I'm sure there's more, but that's, that's just what came to me. Now, the real issue you're gonna find, the average person, not you, uh, my, I, I think most of my audience members here, you guys are minimalist, you're philosophical, you know that. But for anyone new to this channel and um, you're just getting into the world of minimalism, a big issue is one of incentivization. Like, how are you incented to go and actually be a minimalist? Because the human brain is programmed to consume. Uh, whether or not we can afford it or not, whether or not we go into debt, whether we file for bankruptcy or not, the human brain is programmed to consume because that's how we stayed the fuck alive. And resources and food was not as abundant as it was today. For 99.99999% of the human experience for the past two million years, food has been an issue. And so have saber-toothed tigers and disease and diphtheria and all that other crap. Uh, now, abundant resources are quite abundant, especially food. Um, but our brain has not turned off. It has not evolved as quickly as the economy has advanced. So we consider this is why we have obesity. This is why you have consumerism. This is why you have hoarders. So how do you turn off something that you have genetically programmed into you for two million years because your survival fucking depended on it? All right, and this, this is in my book, uh, Poor Richard's Retirement, which everyone should read. That's basically the minimalist version of retirement planning. I whittled it down. You need $175,000 in today's dollars to retire. So go buy that. That's an aside, but that's where this comes from. You, we need an incentive so that you're not fighting your desire to have another Big Mac, to go out and buy this, to go out and buy that, to get the extra pair of shoes. So what you gotta do is you gotta realize that you're going to die and you can piss away your, I'm trying to find something I really don't need. Okay, I got this hat, I got it for hiking. Piss away your, your, your money on stuff, on things. The problem with things is things don't talk to you. Things are not sentient, that hat is not sentient, your Xbox is not sentient, your Ferrari is not sentient. It is a thing, it is finite. It, it, you cannot interact in, with it. I mean, you can drive it, but you can't interact with it. And then you say, okay, well, what gives you the most stimulation? What gives you the most value in life? And you're gonna find out that it's other people. Friends, family, loved ones, children, if you have them. Nieces, nephews are awesome. And when you realize that, you're gonna realize what's great about humans is that they're free. They are free. You get, a conversation costs you nothing, and it's more intellectually stimulating than any kind of video game you could play. Uh, although, if you talk to boring people, there could be a lot of video games are more stimulating. But the <clears throat> larger point being is that once you realize that humans are the most important thing in life, conversation, hanging out with friends, families, and loved ones, um, and interacting with them, once you find that out, everything else falls into place. And you can't just say, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. You, know, you have to understand. You have to incorporate that into your psychology to incorporate it into your psyche, like make it, it is like your heart beating, you don't think about it. It's just like, do I want a jet ski or do I want to talk to my buddy Phil? I want to talk to my buddy Phil and his dog Oreo anytime. Right? So once you get to that, that boom, it eliminates all material desire. You understand, you put things in perspective, you say, oh, it's much more important to do this. And then you find out, you know what I did with this backpack? Look, this backpack with my undies and my socks and my toiletries, all that did was keep me alive and keep me clothed so that I could go visit different friends. That's what I did. Now, I did a lot of hiking too, but all I did was visit, essentially this trip was one big ass road trip, uh, driving around the country visiting different friends and, and doing some exploring as well. But that's, <clears throat> that is what the point and purpose of life is. And then when you realize that, you will start to say, oh, I don't need this. I don't need that. I don't even want it. Matter of fact, the biggest problem you're going to face is like, where are there more intelligent, engaging, interesting people uh, that I can become friends with or, or love or cherish? Um, and that's, going to, that's the real problem minimalists face because you will streamline your life. You will 
and also in doing so have a lot of free time. And they're like, hey, who's with me? And you're like, oh shit. All we got basically is Stefan Molyneux, uh, <laughs> Return of Kings, uh, you know, different podcasts, yo buddy Clary here, uh, all these different internet people that would discuss high-end philosophy. Those, those, those are the only people that are around and everyone else that's within your immediate physical vicinity with a 100 mile radius, they're stuck in the rat race, debt slaves, wage mules, commutes, all that other shit. They got their McMansions, their car loans. And, but anyway, that's, that's a problem down the road. Larger point being, once you realize humans are the most important things and you, you, you put that in, you plug it in, it's like it completely revolutionizes your programming. And then it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't like going shopping. I don't like going and buying crap. I don't like going and, I don't like things. I like to hang out and chill out with people. That's what I like to do. And so that will uh, take care of the biggest problem, and that is getting rid of your addiction to consumerism. Which, which a lot of people say, consumerism, no, consumerism is what kept you alive all this time. But now it's kind of like it, it forces you, ah, well, I'll only eat when I need to, I'll only get the clothes that I need to. But the vast majority of my time and effort is going to be spent on enjoying the company of humans before you die. Because that's it. That's all there is. Once you really, and that, you want a really, a double incentive. Not only are humans the most important thing, it ends. And soon you don't hang, you don't get to hang out with your little niece no more. You don't get to hang out with your grandpa. You don't get to hang out with your grandma. So that really kills any incentive you're gonna piss away sitting in that fucking cube, sitting in that fucking commute, not spending time with your family. But hey, you know, you ladies got your master's degree in public health administration and you're important because you're Marissa Meyer. I mean, you wanna look at a way not to do it? Look at Marissa Meyer. That is the opposite. That is, she has spent all of her life working. She has a kid, she outsourced the kid to a nanny. It, 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 she's got millions upon millions and she still wants to go back and work as a CEO of some company. It's like, spend some time with your fucking kid. I don't even know if she's married. I mean, because it, it's how, how irrelevant and moot in her life a husband and family are. I mean, it, it's sad. It's really sad. Um, so that's it. Just All right, and then finally, one, one little bit of advice. You don't want to be too cheap where, where it costs you more in the long run. I, I've written about this before, but... Um, like, yeah, you can go defend yourself in a, in a public court, but that's going to cost you like a lot more money and fines, or you might even go to jail. Um, public transportation, again, unless you're in New York or Chicago where it's it, you know what? It probably is best not to take public transportation because you don't want to get knifed, you don't want to catch tuberculosis, you don't want to get in a fight. Uh, Aaron, are you saying that everyone? No, but why go? You're, if, if you're with uh, a group of lower income people, and you yourself may be poor. Not everyone who's lower income is bad, but crime tends to correlate with that. So does fights, and so does disease. Now, do you want to go and get that on your, no, you get a car, all right? Same thing with cold, you know, yeah, you could walk or bike to work in below zero temperatures, but then you get pneumonia, all right? Now you're spending eight grand in the hospital, when if you just bought a decent car, you'd be all right. So there's some things, um, what else? Oh, car insurance is another thing. I mean, everyone gets the minimum car insurance. Talk to your car insurance person because usually your, your liability, your property damage only goes up to like maybe 100,000, 150,000. You run your car into somebody's house or fancy your car or something like that, you're gonna cost more than $150,000. So for just like a couple extra bucks a month, you get up to $200,000 in coverage or something. So it's worth dropping a couple pennies and dimes here to save yourselves hundreds of thousands of dollars down the road. Uh, so again, don't be too cheap. Another guy like, you know, I know a guy who squats. Well, okay, what if you cut your arm on an old piece of pipe? Now you got, what is it, tetanus. Did you get your tetanus shot? When's the last, I don't know, 1985? What the hell, when the hell did that happen? So you don't want to be cheap for being cheap sake. Um, but, but and, and you do want to save money, but you, you want to, you may want to pay for some luxuries that will avoid injury, sickness, assault, like, yeah, I mean, a buddy of mine, I got, I got this dirt cheap place in Minneapolis, I'm like, how much, oh, like 300 for a one bedroom, two bedroom house, I'm like, how'd you buy that? And I thought, oh, you're in North Minneapolis, well, that's great, you might get shot, all right, is it, is it worth saving the 200 bucks you did? Is it, so, it's stuff like that, but, all right, hope that helps out, gives you a little tutorial on how to be a minimalist the specific steps, but I hope the, the principles and guys, I think, the philosophy 
is more what's going to guide you and answer all your questions rather than carrying out a list of, oh, he said not to do this, rule 27B. Uh, I think the philosophy and putting humans first, that is what's going to really um, help you out in the long run. So, all right, you guys got questions, go to assholeconsulting.com. I, America's older brother, will take care of you for a price because I am a greedy motherfucker. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.